just to try to start us off because we're all here and I think it'd be a shame to sit around and wait. Um, so why don't we start with the usual things. If you haven't already added yourself to the meeting notes in terms of attendance, um, please do so. I'll go ahead and post a link here in chat and so you can see. Uh, looks like Sarah's on now. Sarah, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Cool. Okay. Thank uh, you let's... for picking us off. I was wrapped up in GitHub issues. Um, so do we have scribes? Nope. We were just about to get to that. Great. So maybe we could have volunteers. So I thought um, we have a, uh, I now have access to the CNCF service desk in um, our ongoing process news. It's coming together. And um, <clears throat> we have some logo ideas from the artist, um, which is great. And so I thought as part of our check-in, before I share those images, which were just, you know, kind of a brainstorm um, based on some notes that I just kind of verbally conveyed. And so there's a bit of telephone. Phone. I thought it might be nice as part of our check-in if people would, if you're so inclined, share any visual imagery you think of or things that we would want to embody in our, you know, communication presence. Because we're gonna we're doing a little microsite about cloud native security, and um, which is like the idea is that the repo is the um about the workings of the sig and that's like where we have like if you're working all of the in progress stuff is more surfaced and the process stuff is more serviced whereas the microsite is more about like our outputs and what people could come and learn from the microsite without necessarily being involved in the sig so um so anyhow so the logo would be for like you know for us to put wherever and then eventually on materials and things um so, uh, so do we have scribes? Sorry, I, I've lost my window. If somebody has some notes up, if you can shout out if we manage to have some volunteers. I'm here, yay. Thank you, Jonathan and Ash. Um, so we don't, I'm going to do so, we're going to do, we're going to have a working session and we'll do some agenda making. So we're going to start with attendance stand up with uh, ideas about, about representing cloud native security. Um, and then we'll have um, agenda making because we have a number of um, issues that need discussion where we're moving towards this proposal process. So I thought we could do some agenda making and um, talk about the things that are currently proposals and things that we would like to have proposals for um, and start following our process. So um, my name's Sarah Allen. I am a co-chair of this working group. Um, Dan may be able to join us, JJ sends his regrets. Um, and um, I have been working on getting our PR count to zero. Thank you, Brendan and um, Emily and other people, uh, Robert, different people who've been chiming in with PRs and on issues, really appreciate that. So that's been my, um, my news for the week. Lots, I'm just gonna go down the attendance list and then we'll see if we missed anybody or loots. Okay. Uh, okay. Hi, uh, my name's, sorry. Okay, my name is Lutz Binke. Um, I work for Figo and I'm on a very crappy network. Um, if you can't hear me, then I'm sorry. Um, I hope I'll make it through the meeting. Oh, great. Oh, and then I forgot to say my imageries of uh, cloud native security. So um, one of the things that I um, like I kicked off the whole logo thing is because um, there a lock I got I kind of appeared on our thing and I, I there's been a lot of discussion that it's not like locked versus unlocked it's um you know risk reduction and so um 
So I, I shouted out on Slack ages ago that like maybe like a secret agent emoji, like somebody we're, we're all like trying to figure things out. So um, I don't know whether you looks have any um, imagery around cloud native you want to add to your stand up. Um, shield and sword. Shield and sword. That's a good to, one. To protect and uh, just strike down those that it might, atta might attack us. Nice. Justin Kappas. Okay, so I don't have any imagery, so I'll just skip that part. Um, this week, the Automotive Tough version uh, obtained, uh, we officially voted for I. Triple ISO certification of or standardization of the 1.0 version for that. Um, the project also is going to be joining the Linux Foundation, not under the CNCF. So we've started that process as well. That'll happen uh, in mid July. And uh, Intoto is officially has the sponsors and everything it needs, is on the docket for the July 9th uh, vote. Um, and in addition to that, I've been trying to wrap things up with OPA, which has meant that Ash and I have been, mostly Ash and I have been playing tag on a few GitHub issues. And I will be um, tapping a few other people who are involved on the shoulder a little more aggressively so that we can finally um, get that done. Great. Thank you. Um, and congratulations to Intono and Tuff. I assume it's going into um, the automotive side is not as cloud native-y which is why it's going to the Linux Foundation, or? Yeah, Uptane is going to be under some new thing that is housing specs in the Linux Foundation, um, which Tuff and uh, other things like Spiffy and others may also end up under as well. Um, it's, it's not like the CNCF. It's not like we sort of leave where we are to go there. It's just sort of an additional resource we can use in the CNCF much like we might decide to use their social media marketing or not decide to use it. But it doesn't change whether we're in the CNCF one way or the other. Great, that's good to know. Ash. Uh, so I'm just back from vacation. Um, I looked at the OPA assessment doc. It looks pretty good. I just had a couple of small comments uh, with Justin addressed. So that's pretty much it. And uh, as far as the logo is concerned, uh, I agree with Lud, something like a shield and sword would look really nice. Um, yep, that's it. Thanks, Carlos. Hey, my name is Carlos Vicencio. I'm working right now in order to collect a couple of uh, use cases that maybe need a security assessment. Um, well, put it uh, back uh, on the uh, site in order to start the discussion there. That is pretty much what I trying to achieve uh, this week. Wait, so it's, uh, is that the for the Falco assessment? Yes. All right, yeah. Great. Emily. Do we have Emily on? Uh, she may have dropped off for a sec. Um, She's having phone issues. Yeah, she right on the. Uh, um, yep. Feel free to include notes in the chat, um, and we'll get back to you, Craig. Hi, I'm Craig Ingram I'm from Salesforce, and I'm on the uh, Kubernetes Security Audit Working Group, uh, which is wrapping up. We're just most of the the findings and things have been handed to the Product Security Group for Kubernetes. Uh, and we're kind of just wrapping up like reports and things like that and a couple issues under embargo until product security handles that. Um, but that's exciting to have that wrapping up. Uh, imagery, um, I like the the shield and the sword or some type of armor type thing instead of the lock. That sounds that sounds pretty cool. Great. Thanks, Craig. Jonathan. Um, <clears throat> so I've been working on some threat modeling work uh, around Kubernetes and uh, reaching out to Justin Cormack and potentially any others within the security SIG group to take a look at that. Um, and I chair the financial users group. And this is some work that we're looking at contributing back to 
the community from from within that group. So obviously looking for uh, security guidance on that. Great. Um, thanks for joining us. Uh, Michael Ducey. Uh, I'm one of the Falco project leads um, and can't get my Bluetooth to work <laughs> for whatever reason. Uh, I like the shield and the sword. Um, you could probably extend it further and just, you know, a knight or something like that. Um, the thing I've been working on this week is to get the installation docs for Falco rewritten, um, <clears throat> which that's been submitted via pull request. And then uh, the other thing, we kicked off our security audit with the Cure 53 people. And so making sure that trying to get uh, some things to get those people up to speed and, and working and productive. So. Great. Thanks, Michael. Brandon. Hi, um, I'm Brandon from IBM Research. Um, so what's new? Um, we are starting to push um, the work on image encryption into OCI spec. Uh, we already issued a KEP uh, for the feature, uh, which kind of gets me curious into you know how we can get uh, whether these things are going to be part of the security assessments that we do as well. Um, but that's far be a discussion for another time. Um, also, kind of just a shout out, uh, if you're going to be at KubeCon China uh, next week, um, comment on the, the issue that's open and we can probably meet up. Um, imagery. So I, I like the sword and the shield thing also, but I kind of um, something that I, I would see kind of cute is like if you had the CNCF logo with the shield as well. <laughs> yeah. Great. Uh, Christian, welcome back. Yeah, thanks. Um, yeah, I've been out on vacation. I just came back um, um, on Monday. Um, so I don't have a lot to report. My my mental image is we, we used a, a, a an uniformed officer checking a passport for one of our products for a while. Um, not sure if uniformed officers is the right thing, but checking a passport, maybe a knight checking a passport or something like that to, to go with the shield uh, theme that we have. Um, and I'm still interested in um, uh, discussing the whole platform implementer persona that I brought up a couple of weeks ago. Um, I had scheduling conflict, so I, I couldn't make it for the last couple of weeks. Yeah, so maybe um, we could have a, uh, we, let's, um, I'm going to pick a note on the agenda. Yeah, I created an um, issue for it. So. Yeah, can you, can you add the issue into the agenda? Sure. Um, and we'll, we can tape, we can like, we'll collect a whole bunch of things. Some of them might leak over to a future meeting. Mm -hmm. but, um, but then we can take a look at it in any case. Um, TK. Uh, I don't have anything, any other updates today, actually. So I think um, on the imagery, uh, I'll give some thoughts. If I come across anything different, I'll let you know. All right, great. Thanks. Amy. Hey there, I'm just here to listen in today. Can you say who you are for the new people? Oh yeah, sure. I'm the uh, uh, CNCF program manager that helps with all of the SIGs. So if you have other ideas about logo, please let me know. Um, so, uh, and I, I actually created an issue so that we can gather all the Perfect. things in one place. So then people can chime in on that issue um, and then everybody can hear um, everybody's thoughts. Thanks, Amy. Uh, Roger. Maybe Roger's having phone issues. We'll skip to Amy, Emily, who, um, thank you for putting yourself further down on the list. Do we have audio? Um, I'm Emily Fox. I'm from the National Security Agency, and I've been doing a couple of PRs trying to get the governance and a lot of the documentation up to date and integrated and trying to provide more foundations for all of that. And I vote anything that is not a security lock, I'd be happy with. Yes. All right. <laughs> Um, sorry, I was so obsessed with being sure my mic was on. I didn't notice that I was muted. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, Roger, you want to, you're yeah. up next? Yeah. Um, so I've been kind of pulled, most of my time pulled by 
um, where we are in the release process, plus the fact that we just had some um, reorg that was actually very good for me, but means that I'm bringing other people up to speed. So um, that's been a bit of a distraction, but um, I agree with the anything but a lock. Um, and, and I think it should be, uh, thing I like about Sword and Shield is that it can be very simple. I think we should use imagery that can, that can work at icon or sticker size as well as website size. Um, and so I think, you know, things that can be very, very simple in design are really useful. That said, um, one of the things I would really like to do that I brought up in Barcelona is um, uh, starting with ride along and then maybe getting more involved in um, future assessments. Um, I had volunteered my um, security engineer who promptly left the company two days after I, after I uh, put him forth. And I think we're not going to get to replace him for that. That is the security guy on the Kubernetes distro team uh, till probably next quarter. So, um, but anyway, I would still very much like to um, ride along and be able to carry some stuff over to dealing with uh, our projects internally as well. Um, Justin, do you have any, like, so I think chiming in on the issues when there's one open and then you'll hear about them on like uh, the, um, uh, on the meeting. So like we welcome people shadowing and um, Justin Kaplis, do you have anything more to add about, is there a process that you envision for that or do you want people to just join the channel and help? There's a, uh, there's somewhere a document or an issue or a thing that says who signed up for which assessments and what okay. we do that a few people got added to. And I wish I had a, we should probably link that somewhere prominently off the site and people can add themselves. I know um, I added a couple of people and who reached out to me and a few people added themselves. So um, there's at least an exist, like there's a proof it's somewhere, but uh, we do need to link it better. Cool. Yeah, I somehow. I will search. I probably have access to that somewhere, but don't know where it is. Um, so yeah, it would be great if you could link that or at least. Great, just if you can find it. All right, did it? Uh, did we miss anybody? All right. Hey, it's Mark so, Underwood. I just want to oh, get hi, my Mark. image in. Hey, I, so my image is a data center with a guy sitting or a girl sitting with accountant shades on with CNCF on the cap. And the reason is for this is that I think it's really not about these traditional war defense kind of things. It's more about risk and the people we that the public associates with risk is accountants. So that may be wrong. But anyway, there's, a, there's an alternative image to think about. I like it. Well, that might um, be it from me today. Super. So um, we, if, I'd like to do a little agenda making next. And so if you have a issue, project, proposal, or thing that isn't yet written up and is an issue that, you know, feedback from the group would be valuable or, you know, awareness, um, if you can um, put it under here, we have the um, proposed, or I guess we can put it here. There it is. Thank you. If you can put, we'll just take a few minutes and I just put the logo here. Um, and Christian put in platform in implementer. And uh, and does everybody, have, if you don't have access to the notes, but you have access to the chat, you can say it in chat. And I will share my screen. And maybe Michael Ducey, if you can put in the SIG security day issue.
I just have to rearrange my screen so that I have everything in one place. Sarah, did you lose audio there? Unmuting. Sorry, I was typing while somebody else was talking and I muted myself. Thank you. I think we already sort of covered Shanghai on the agenda. Um, and we should probably touch on the process so I'm going to put process first and, um, and just go over that, which is that we have now, um, here, actually, before I dive into that, we'll have these, I think SIG security day is time sensitive. I'm going to put that first. I'm going to touch on process so that we cover any questions for proposals and so forth and and then um, any sort of in progress proposals or proposed proposals. And then I think you didn't have a, a urgency, Christian, right on the platform implementer role. I'll put that. I think it'd be good for everybody to have a chance to read that and queue it up for next week, um, unless we have a bunch of time at the end. Um, but I think we'll be busy. Any um, any other things to add to the agenda? We're going to go over some process. We'll talk about six security day. We'll talk about the other proposals. Touch on the logo, um, and because I think we have some imagery that I saw on one of my channels. Amy, do you have access to the images, which I thought were in the service desk account, but I don't see them there? I'll dig them up while we're covering the other things. So, um, so just quickly, I just wanted to show everybody if you now, if you go to issues and you say new issue, you can make a proposal have a security assessment or make a suggestion. I wish these were in a different order because it makes it seem like security assessments are the thing you do after a proposal, but um, I think they're in um, alphabetical order. So, um, so generally, um, we are steering people towards the governance model where um, proposals mean that you want to take the lead or participate in driving something forward and you're, you're kind of volunteering with the proposal. Suggestions are either it's like, you're not really sure what it's gonna be, so you're not quite ready to volunteer and you want feedback or you think it's a good idea, but you're not gonna work on it, right? And generally we prioritize things that have enthusiasm for people who stand up and say that they're gonna work on it um, because this is all driven by um, people who step up and do the things. Um, so, uh, so any questions on our kind of issue process? I'm in and interrupt me. Um, and so in now, if you go to issues, we have this proposal tag, which then have, there are two proposals where we really should have like something that goes from proposal to like, and whatever the noun is for, it's actually an accepted proposal. Although the internet has a long history, of course, with request, request for comments becoming specs while still being called RFCs. So maybe, you know, there's this precedent to leaving things as a proposal. And I think SIG security Day is also in that category. So I'm gonna assign a label um, because I think that this so now if you use one of those templates, it auto labels it, which is pretty nifty. Um, but then I'll make this a proposal. And then um, if you see something that should be a proposal, 
and isn't labeled that way, just shout out on the triage channel or put a note on it and um, with whatever information is missing. And then we'll, um, we will, uh, we have a few triage volunteers who can help have the, the permissions to label things. Um, so, uh, Michael, should we go first to SIG Security Day? Sure. Although I don't think this covers the proposal format, so I will. Oh, sorry. It's okay. We can um, we can just cover the question. Why don't you go over what it is in general, and then we'll cover the, kind of the open questions in terms of what's missing from the template format, and I'll dig up the template and add it. Yeah. Um, we had talked about this a couple weeks ago on the, on the call, so I'll just bring it back up for anyone who wasn't on it. Uh, the idea is to create a day that's focused on security. So um, take a step back. So every every KubeCon and Cloud Native Con before they have this day of add-on events. Um, this is typically used by vendors as a way to create, um, you know, a vendor specific, you pull in their vendor specific community and pitch product. Uh, it's also been used uh, for the Kubernetes Contributor Summit is held that day. Um, and then last uh, edition of KubeCon at Barcelona, uh, the security folks got together, I think almost pretty much like six storage got together and had a cloud native security day. Um, it was ran and organized by the vendors of that community. However, it was still a very community driven and community oriented uh, day. And so the idea is, can we create something similar in the security world uh, under SIG security, mainly to kind of address the fact that security is getting kind of bifurcated, or at least that day is getting bifurcated with security vendors deciding to do their own things, and then sometimes doing things that uh, it isn't obvious that it's a vendor branded event that you're going to, um, because they just use very generic terms. Um, so what I want to do is create the definitive cloud native um, security day that pulls in everybody from the community so that we can have conversations around some of the topics that are proposed. The idea is that it would be a mix of speakers and I really want to try the open space ideas because um, on the call where we brought this up, somebody had mentioned that the, the most valuable time that they often find is talking to people in the hallway and having conversations around things. Um, and open spaces really kind of enable that and provide that functionality for people. Um, <clears throat> it's a well proven path in the world of uh, DevOps days conferences and things like that. Um, and other conferences as well. So, um, I would like to see if we could incorporate open spaces in some way, uh, as well as traditional kind of speakers and, and talks, uh, like that. I think it would have to be a single track. Uh, event just to get started um, and then eventually it could probably grow into something multi-track if we really wanted to put the effort behind it. Yeah, I don't know if anybody else has gone to um, the Internet Identity Workshop. Um, that is, it's been going on for like 20 years. They have it twice a year and they use open space um, where the people who show up make the agenda and it's it's actually very related to security and I wonder whether we could get Kalia Hamlin. She doesn't actually facilitate it anymore, but she facilitated the first like, you know, 16 of them herself. And um, she's an incredibly experienced facilitator who is also an identity expert. Um, so uh, that would, might be uh, something to explore. And if we had a space which had a bunch of different rooms, we could potentially, you know, have like maybe some opening panels or things that we arranged and then some, some of the day be open space. Yeah, we um, will have to see what, so we submitted this as a proposal to the CNCF and I don't know, and maybe Amy can help us understand if there's special dispensation for SIGs about adding on one of these events. And then since we're actually technically a CNCF sponsored SIG, does the CNCF provide the funding for that? Or do we need to go find sponsors to provide the money um, into that, um, you know, so Sysdig is happy to sponsor. Because you all are so new <laughs> at this point um, that I don't think we've even thought about that yet. So let me go back to like the team and kind of let them know that you're interested in this and see what we can do around that. Um, okay. I know there's a bunch of emails running around um, and I'll 
I think this is the first time we've run into this. So thank you. Okay. Um, yeah, and I think that one of the things to consider, um, Michael, and we, you know, like, I think there's probably have to be some research outside of this call, but there's two, at least, you know, like, as currently as on the, like, I read through all of their materials, and kind of there's the, if you want to do, if we want to do it, like, on site at the conference center, then it has to be classroom setting. And there's, there's no flexibility with how the room is arranged. Yep. And if but we can be in the registration, right? Like we can be like, you just sign up for it and then we could get something, if there's something available like a few blocks away. Like we sort of- Yeah, the, the they also have offsite, which um, um, is just in the Marriott next door. Oh, and that has more flexible space? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. So there's one other related thing I'd like to mention, which is that NYU every year hosts in, in early November, I think it's sixth to ninth this year, we host a one of the biggest um, security like events in the world. This thing called Seesaw, um, and it has people from industry and academia and government, and and um, we have something like twenty thousand students participate in at least the initial round. And there's been interest from some of our sponsors on having some kind of security event that they would pay for to have people come and do this. So. Uh, one of the things I thought of was to have something, I think, quite similar to what's being described here and uh, possibly try to get uh, some folks from a lot of the cloud native projects that have a security bent or folks from SIG security and things, um, especially those in the area. But of course, you know, hopefully a few people to come in and check it out. Is there interest in this as well? Or is it something that would be a lot less interesting because you'd actually have to go to um, the, the cultural and uh, financial capital of the world and hang out uh, there for a few days in New York City. I always You mean in doing that. a, I've been, So would this be- of understood like- Go ahead, Michael. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry, no, Jeff. I was saying I kind of miss. I either cut out or I misunderstood what you were proposing, Justin. There's a conference or at NYU. It? There's a conference at NYU. It's a big security conference. We have sponsors that want to host some kind of cloud-ish workshop there. The idea would be to do something effectively this, and uh, would some people be interested in traveling out to do this? This is. Uh, this would be going to New York in November 6th to 9th time frame and getting to see like massive, um, you know, think of something like RSA or something like that with less of a kind of commercial feel. So you get the best students in the world that are uh, participating in CTFs. There's embedded hardware challenges. You get research presentations. There's a dozen or so different events that happen there that are capture the flag or trivia quiz, high school forensics challenge. It's, it's really a neat event. Um, so I'm wondering if since the sponsorship aspect of that seems to already be figured out from our side, if there would be interested interest in people in this community to come and attend and participate if we, you know, which would have no charge other than possibly the charge of uh, going to New York, although I can try to see if we can cover some of that cost. So let's, um, so I think that, so are you, unless you're proposing this instead of doing it at KubeCon, I wonder whether we should, I mean, we can take quick feedback from people. Like, I'm trying to figure out, like, are you asking, would this conflict because it's around the same date? And then it would no, draw I mean, people I, away from this? There's some, there's some uncertainty about some aspects of this, uh, about this proposal about sponsorship, and do we have to charge people, and can we get space, and how does all that work? And then I'm wondering if, or it, at least, you know, certainly for people that are in New York, I would hope that they would be interested in attending um, this event, if it sounds interesting, but I'm hoping we can put on a show, like a program where we would get 
presentations with folks from like Spiffy Spire, Falco, um, you know, and Istio related projects uh, and, and have a workshop that sounds very much similar to what is being described here. I, I don't want to kind of like um, steal the thunder or, or change, you know, change what's happening here if this is kind of a done deal. But I, I want to just mention that we don't have, you know, we may have some of the logistics also here uh, sorted and perhaps there's another way, you know, there's another option here if there's problems with, you know, we'd have to get sponsors and we have a hard time or, you know, th these, the, the problem with the CNCF events is they're really oversubscribed and there's a million things to do and a million people to talk to and you get pulled in 87 different directions. So this might be another option where um, you won't have 87 things you have to go to. Anyway, just throwing it out there. Yeah. I think they, they sound both like they're separate things, but they're both really interesting. Um, the New York event, uh, to me, sounds like the audience, I could be wrong, but it sounds like the audience uh, will be, you know, folks that go to NYU uh, and other universities in New York um, as the actual audience. And then this is more, uh, you know, the, the folks that come to KubeCon. Um, I think the initial thing that Michael said was for the KubeCon thing in San Diego, uh, currently what we have today is their security events the day before, but their vendor, they're championed by vendors. And so you don't actually get a good picture of what, you know, the community wants and, you know, some of the work that we are doing uh, as a SIG. And I think that's kind of what, I think that's what we're trying to champion with this pre-day event. Yep, exactly. Yeah, I, I, I think, um, I mean, we do have thousands of people come in from out of town for this event. But it does have, uh, and it does have academia and government there in much greater force than you'll see at a KubeCon. But there's also an, a, you know, a fair amount of industry. But you won't have the kind of people that are coming in to go to a talk on storage and oh hey the security thing looks good. It's going to be security people from industry, security people from academia, security people from government, all there. Um, but I, I I get the I get the point here. It's it's less it's yeah it, it's less broad industry only participation. Oh, I got you, Mike, uh, Justin. I didn't realize that. I thought it was just like a New York, um, you know, NYU event. But uh, no, I think it sounds cool uh, just from like a conference perspective uh, and from you know content perspective on security. I think there's a lot more that all of us could be doing to actually be talking about stuff uh, in general. Yeah, I'd be happy to participate uh, with anything that you saw, but I think it would be a uh, in addition to what we want to try and do at KubeCon. Um, mainly because our audience and our end users are there at KubeCon versus, while you might have end users there at Seesaw, you definitely have a much greater concentration of end users at, in San Diego. Yeah, and I think the additional goal of trying to um, take some of the air out of the vendor days um, on security is a really good goal. Um, it doesn't feel to me like it should be something that, you know, you basically direct how the day goes for security by throwing money at it. I say this, of course, as a vendor that doesn't have much money to throw at it, but. Well, and I say this from the point of view of a vendor as well, but, yeah. um, you know, vendors are necessary, but I just feel like uh, the CNCF builds themselves as an open source community, and which yeah. it is, and I, I just think that we need to, we need to help them em emphasize that. I agree. And stay true to that mission. Yeah, I was, I was largely joking about that, but yes, I agree from a mission, from mission perspective, which is the important perspective. Yes. Um, I'm trying to write up this. I think the impact statement, like the, this format, is actually really helpful because it, like, it, it helps us maybe like frame this difference between this event and what Justin described, and it sounds like people don't 
think that there's a issue with having these two close together because there are people who live in New York and it would be easy for them to go to the New York thing or people who have reason, you know, where they're traveling all the time and that might be fine. Um, so it's, it sounds like there'd be enthusiasm or at least interest in um, Justin writing up the, uh, the, the potential for the um, uh, New York event. Sure, I'll do that, thanks. Um, so we want to say like there's a lot of vendor focused events on Monday and having a, and which, um, risks like sort of basically splitting the community. I think splitting is a bit strong, but uh, um, yeah, like you maybe say something about you know losing focus of the open source. I, I think that's good. Or something like that. <clears throat> okay. Who's got the smoke detector whose battery is about to die? Because this was happening on the last call, and it made me think that it was a smoke detector in my house. <laughs> I think it's TK. And I, 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 it, it's happening always. So I, I don't think it's a smoke detector. I think it must be the, the plug-in that he's using. No, he's right. He's right. It was, I'm the guilty party. I think I have one of those things, and I gave up on the, <laughs> I apologize, but I gave up on changing batteries on those things. It just... Uh, uh, you know, almost I muted up myself uh, completely from those, that thing, it's like a noise to me. Um, the reason I unmuted myself, I was wondering, is the whole purpose of these things on this KubeCon and so forth, is it to promote certain ideas that we are going to be proposing as a security group, or is it just to have some open dialogue where we are collecting information from different vendors and somehow that would be a contribution towards our goal, whatever that might be at the final form in this security group. I'm trying to understand and clarify something so that, uh, you know, so that we have, we have a similar goal as a whole group, as to what, what is actually happening in this group at the end. So you're asking about the the day being sort of a whether it's a productive like act. no I, I'm not quite um, you know picking on the day per se but I'm thinking about you know the purpose of these um, proposals on a security uh, day that we designate or we uh, suggest as to what do we project to the outside of this community that what are we doing and how this is related to this particular uh, group, whether are we going to take these as an input and try to massage them or incorporate them in our final publication, whatever that might be. I heard before that we're not creating a standard. That's what I heard. I'm still trying to get a handle on this. Um, are we creating a guidelines? Are we creating a recommendation? And somehow how this day event is relate or does relate to that goal. So I, typically in an unconference, this is mostly about an exchanging of ideas, right? So you have the different people coming together and discuss arbitrary things, right? And it could be that some people get together and decide to come up with a new project or they come get, get together and decide, you know, maybe we should have a, a standard document of some form, right? So I don't think this is, because you mentioned that earlier, I don't think this is about vendor interaction. I think this is typically about community interaction, right? You know, we, anybody can propose any, I assume this is similar to an unconference, right? I took a brief look. Well, at I think that we're, um, we're 
that's exactly like kind of like what this proposed like the the proposal is do the day and then um one of the to do's is figuring out the format and so the proposal is that there'll be a mix of like speakers right that there might be a kickoff right with speakers and panels and then some of it is open space and that's you know that's kind of the topic of discussion and i think that what tk brings up is what are we trying to achieve with this day because what we're trying to achieve then determines the sp like like you say christian like if what we're trying to achieve is well whoever shows up like like knowledge sharing amongst ourselves right and and just kind of furthering the end like what the individuals and we together want to do then the open space format we're not very directive about that right but we could say even in the open space format we could say we're seeking like presentations in this area right we, we're people aren't going to be you know teaching knitting they're going to be doing things around security and policy and so forth so we we can frame the open space thing um so i think that going back to tk's question the, you know, this is the objective of our group, right? To discover and produce resources that enable secure access, policy control, and safety. And then we have like a big long charter that does that, that elaborates on that, um, where, you know, like, we're basically kind of, I think the vision actually captures it best, which is like, which is that there exists a future where we're, we have all the tools we need to make secure systems. And when we talk to each other, there isn't a great deal of confusion about what we're talking about. And, um, and that after we get through the basics of explaining to each other and the world in a common way, what is, what do we mean by cloud native security anyhow? And what are the things that people are doing today that, um, at least I've talked to most, most people in this group that I've talked to one-on-one -on -one believe that are, there actually are a lot of gaps right now. And there are a lot of, there's a lot of DIY security, which everybody's like, I'd rather not be building all this myself. Um, and you know, there's this so actually security risks from just like, oh yeah, I just decided to invent this thing that I wish I had this thing that, you know, like other people use. So, so th like we're just working through this and, um, we'd like to find standards rather than create them. And I think the key thing that this, to answer TK's question about what exactly are we doing here? Um, the, I think the, the key thing about the, uh, for a bunch of people who created the CNCF um, seem to believe that the word, that being a standard body implies that you make only one standard and then you require everybody to conform to that standard, right? And so that's not what we're doing. We're not saying we're going to invent something that then we set a requirement on all CNCF things, right? That's what it means by we're not making a standard. But we can, like the Cloud Events folks, like the Serverless Working Group created a Cloud Events specification, which says, hey, if you're doing Cloud Events, and you specify it and you follow the specification, then it's interoperable. And it's a more like, this is a way that we can all work together. Um, does that help, TK? Yeah, I was just wondering, I, I, that definitely helps what you just clarified, no question about it. But I was just wondering whether, can we reach to a point where we agree and say, okay, we are at least trying to get to a document that will serve as a recommendation perhaps or a guideline even though that might include multiple standards from the industry that might exist that we will pick and choose and so forth but it will serve the purpose of anyone that is trying to develop something that will reside in a cloud native format from the perspective of the security so in other words, someone will get some benefit from by reading these things or following this documentation, saying that, well, here is the guidelines. This is what we are going to follow if we want to reside in the cloud native um, environment. And we're going to be able to sufficiently secure ourselves based on CNCF SIG security groups recommendation. So I think this is a, this is a big, I think it would be actually really helpful to have this as its own discussion 
because this is kind of feeds into the, like, I think that this is the one of our challenges, right? That we have a white paper and a landscape and we have a lot of questions about like, we're not all making this, just because we're all doing cloud things doesn't mean they're all the same thing, right? If I'm making a hosted deployed system, that's not the same as I'm making built software that somebody else deploys and, um, you know, libraries versus web services. So, um, but I think that we're, we veered off of the topic of SIG Security Day. And I think that, um, I don't think that we're gonna finalize. I think that, I think what I'd like to do is send this back to you, Michael, which is that like, the goal of the day is um, like maybe this isn't um, the question to you is after this day are you expecting that something like what will have been different what what will have been accomplished at the end of the day like is there is there anything that like that the output of the end of the day that you would want to articulate? I, I would argue that the security day should provide the community with an opportunity for education, information sharing, collaboration, and cultural shift with regards to security and cloud native environments. If I was going to that day, I would expect to walk away with a, huh, that's how this organization is doing it in our cloud native environment. Or I never thought of, of integrating security into DevOps in that particular fashion. More of like an information exchange and a collaboration. Like how do we improve this space? Yeah. Like we talk about all the time, whenever we go to these conferences, like this doesn't exist. Why doesn't it exist? Maybe do like a hackathon or recommend that in a hallway track and then set that up as like sponsored out of SIG security or and supported by SIG security to do this hackathon thing at the next, I don't know, conference event. I like, I'm expecting this to be identifying gaps in the space, enabling people to find each other and to work together to achieve security in cloud native environments. But it's, it's not just the technology and the tooling, it's the processes and the culture and the practices that go with it. Yep. And it's the, the, the takeaway from the day is getting all of those people in the room with those questions and those ideas and those concerns so that everyone can come together in one common location to, to talk about these things. So, so would it be fair to say then this would be a uh, tool to collect uh, broader industry experts, um, you know, viewpoints as well as suggestions and inputs to be taken into this SIG security group and to make something out of it as a recommendation or guideline? I mean, how, how well, does this relate to this group? That's what I'm getting at because- It relates I, to the group I'm, because we're pro pro providing a resource as per our, our per sentence of what the charter is for the group or the vision and that we're providing a resource for this area of information exchange and like-minded people getting together to discuss these issues. Now, if we want right, specific outputs of this, hold on just one second. Um, yep. um, I, sorry, I forget your name. Um, so if we want specific outputs, the open spaces can give us specific outputs because if we do open spaces, they're supposed to be a scribe in the open spaces. And then we can have notes of that conversation that actually took place in that open space and have that as an output that could come back to the group. Is that Emily yeah. on the phone? Yeah, it was me. Um, I, it, exactly what Michael said. If there's conversations in open spaces that are going on, the scribe should be recording that. And that can be one of those archived uh, documents or one of those archived discussions that have gone on and uh, providing a centralized document for best practice and and doing security in the cloud is like way, way too broad of an area. I think that, and it's kind of outside of the scope of the SIG, in my opinion, in that we're reviewing the open source projects or the cloud native projects that are coming in to look at how they're doing security and inform the community in a centralized fashion. This is the way that they're doing things. And here's, here's our recommendations back to those individual projects and efforts about how they could potentially do it better. Because security is, it's not a like, 
follow all of these check boxes and you're secure. It's a do what makes sense in your environment and what your organization is, has a risk tolerance and risk appetite for accomplishing. And, and that's one of those cultural and process kind of practice things. So generating a single document as the output of a security day, I don't think is, is within scope of that effort. It's more of providing that opportunity, like Michael said, back to the community to learn from each other and to gain potentially better exposure, do the appropriate kind of networking to find out how other people are doing things and how they can take it back and leverage it within their own environments, make it better and then contribute back out. I'd, I'd second that. that. That's what I'd like to get out of that sort of thing if I was to attend. Yep, third. I think that, um, like, I, I think that the, um, I'd like to still see something that I, I like, I, I, that's what I want showing up there. I think it would also be neat to think about whether they're um, kind of the way that there's a conversation going on about the presentations and use cases that, that frame, that, is there some way to frame this? such that it is more likely that at the end of the day, whatever artifacts are produced are useful outside of the, from the outside of the people who show up, right? And so um, I think it might be neat for, um, uh, I think Emily, you had volunteered to help Michael on um, kind of framing the, uh, the agenda. I the did. Thank you. Um, but yeah, if, if you could maybe kind of firm up the, the how it's framed so that um, so that maybe there would be some like to, at, at least to be clear what the outputs would be. I mean, maybe this the day is just for the people who show up. Right. But I like the idea that at least some of it would be the notes or the whatever is produced there would be useful after. And I think um, like crisping that up a little bit would um, you know, I think make the day more successful. Yeah, and there's there's nothing preventing us from recording these any of the talks or anything like that. Yeah, but I do think it's like it's very different if we're recording something that is like this meeting today, right? Which is like, meh. Yeah, you can watch it, but no, no, I'm talking about the presenters. Right. So I think like you know, sort of like delineating which parts of it are really just hallway track. You know, they're they're more for the people who are there, right? And which parts of it are things that it's kind of producing content or resources which could be useful afterwards. And, um, and you know, like a, as you finalize the format. Um, so do you have, a, so I have, I kind of have a draft of this change. Um, Michael, I'm, I'm just gonna leave this as dot, dot, dot. Um, go. So I think it, let's not delete everything that I just had written there. No, I so this is so I, I'm kind of inclined to send this to you in an email and not committing it because I I don't think I deleted the only word I deleted was discuss. Okay, sorry, I thought you were deleting that whole bullet list. No, I was going to move it to the bottom. Like, so what I did here, I, I'm going to just email this to you. I'm not going to commit it because it's not done. But um, th like, if we say that this is the proposed format, right, and the goal. So then there's like a little checklist about how far we are through it. And you can edit this. Okay, I had an oh, I had this uh, issue open for a while. And when I opened the issue, there were no purple. Yeah, I know this was this. I, I totally get it. Um, and if you want to move some of this to a Google Doc or whatever is useful, that would be good. Um, but, uh, but yeah, if, you know, we're retroactively conforming to our new process. So that's, it's all good. Um, but I haven't committed this. I'll just send you an email and you can use it or not or whatever. Um, all right. So it's 11 o'clock. Thanks everybody. I guess we needed a whole session on SIG security day. Um, Michael, do you, if you need any other, do you need any other inputs from the group? Or we can also like follow up with Slack right after this or have a quick check in for the, on the logistics. But it sounds like people are very enthusiastic. 
I think Michael dropped because he said oh, he had okay. a call. All right. Okay, so, um, and then um, feel free to chime in on the logo. I will brainstorm with the person who does the logo. Usually they have ideas about how to kind of converge on decisions that are structured. But um, right now I think we're, we're ideating on imagery and, um, and so, uh, so yeah, we'll get some of the notes into the, um, anybody should feel free to chime in now. All right, thanks everybody. And we'll see y'all next week. Thank you. Thanks, y'all.